to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. We did it. We played all of the Week 12 games. That's kind right. Of. We did it. We did Who it. Who do you think you are? I am. <laughs> and yeah. here we are. It's Week 13. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, we kind of. Yeah. I mean, we kind of did. They all they all happened. The checkbox was completed and yes. all the games were checked. But two of those games were, I don't know. They, they weren't, they, they didn't feel like, they didn't feel like NFL football. Like professional football. Right. When you've got a wide receiver playing quarterback off the practice squad and and the Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon football.com just let's let's retire that. Yeah, well, I agree. I, I agree. I liked I liked the time slot. The game was I mean, look, that's that is an AFC North game. That's that's what all the games between the Ravens and the Steelers feel like. It was a weird time for it and it would have been a lot better if Lamar Jackson was on the field. But I and Mark know. Andrews and Mark Ingram yeah, but, and J.K. Uh, Dobbins and Clay Campbell. And ben Roethlisberger played way above his final stat line, his wide receivers. I don't know what was going on there. They were saying that the, the field was wet, and but I, I don't know. What, just dry your hands off, man. Like, I, everybody I don't think, was dropping everything. People were fumbling. What was dude, happening? The the Ravens clearly greased the Steelers' <laughs> gloves. I mean, there's no other way. It was unbelievable the amount of drops. Uh, Big Ben should have had a monster game. Claypool should have had a monster game. Deontay Johnson, Eric Ebron should have had an even more monster game. And they dropped so many balls. It, that was that was the thing. You, it was like, without without Lamar Jackson and without the Steelers able to catch, it was just brutal to watch. When you spend the majority of the week in COVID protocols trying not to catch anything, oh. it carries on into Hey-o. the game. All right. And uh, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> but we, we're here. We did get to week 13. So that's yes. good. And, and uh, come on now, Jason. We had a we had a laser strike from Trace McSorley. I was going to give Jason credit. 70-yard yeah. Hollywood Brown touchdown. You That's said right. that Hollywood would really step it up with McSorley behind center. What I said is his problem is Lamar Jackson. And That's I true. Don't, I don't, I don't want to say, I told you so, <laughs> but I told you so. It took the third stringer to get it done. It, yep. It's tempting to, you know, I know we're playing for a division in our league of record, Jason. It's tempting to just slide Hollywood in there. With, oh, ben, with a, Benny Snell against you. but You, uh, you really should. Our, our matchup means... Very little nothing. for the playoffs. Yeah. We have a busy show today. Week 13, Fantasy Forecast Part 1 starts with the week. The Boom Boom Kicker taking it up to 100. The show's about to take it up to 1,000. Oh, uh, baby. Uh, episode 1,000 is next week. Uh, uh, I'm excited to find out what's going to happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, when Brooks chimes in like that, you know he's doing something special behind the scenes. I, I'm really stoked. That's Looking 100. forward to it. I mean, it's it's not every day you get to do your final episode. So, <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, I almost posted. I said it's actually Jason's final episode. We we we're pushing him into retirement. Uh, Mike and I have certain equity marks that we want to hit, and there's just really no way to hit it without right without pushing one of us. somebody out the door. <laughs> but Wednesday should be a great show. Make sure uh, make sure you tune in. Is that when it is? Is Wednesday? Yeah, I thought it was Thursday. Today. Wednesday. Oh, okay. Wednesday? What 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 year is it? Where am I? <laughs> uh youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. If you want to watch the show, we'll be back into the studio tomorrow. Appreciate everybody uh sharing their you know, Spotify put out their like most listened to podcast yeah, metrics wrap, for wrapped up or whatever. Something yeah, like that. Yeah. They wrapped it up. They wrapped it up and they gave everybody their little badge of who they listen to the most. So people have been sharing their uh, footballers, spitballers, metrics with us, and um, yeah, they're delightful. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for that, and all the the support on Apple Podcasts, subscribing, reviewing the show. We do this year round, so we really appreciate all the support out there. And the website's thefantasyfootballers.com. I think we mostly talked about the Wednesday afternoon game. 
I guess the takeaways that I would throw out there, Ebron, very heavily involved, could have had an even bigger game. 11 targets was the headline there. Benny Snell was the clear workhorse, only three carries for McFarlane. So if Connor was to miss next week, Snell is an option for fantasy players. Gus Edwards was atrocious, mm. uh, fell into the end zone, which really still kept him in the single digits. It was just a bad offensive yeah, performance for that it was, team. it was a bad game. The, uh, what I wanted to po uh, point out from the running back situation on the Ravens was how much Justice Hill was used. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is not a, oh, let's let's get back on the Justice Hill train. That thing, that thing ran off the rails years ago. But it puts even more confidence to me in the transition happening to J.K. Dobbins. I had I had similar thoughts. Every time I saw him running ahead of Gus Edwards, it made me feel like they're preparing the team for, for J.K. Dobbins. But that could just be wishful thinking and, uh, you know, trying to yeah, project our believe. desires on it. All right, let's take it up to 100. Taking it up to 100. Presented by Head & Shoulders. Available at Walmart. I, I hear that drop, Mike, and, uh, you know, a thousand episodes. There's been a lot of drops and, uh, you know. So many. Mo you've done most of them, Jason and I. We handle some of the riffs, obviously, but uh, you've you've handled 100% of them. And somebody shared their air guitar. Oh, uh, man. Video. It was so good. Did we retweet that on the main account? We're about to. We really we should. should. All right, yeah, we, we should. yeah we'll, we'll take care of that. Yeah, someone uh, was listening to the show with their their uh, toddler there, and they just the toddler starts rocking out. Man, it was fantastic. Air guitaring the intro to the show. Yes. All right. Last week, Mike ended up with the hit on Cole Beasley, thanks to his uh, wonderful passing work. <laughs> yeah, passing work. Week thirteen, taking it up to one hundred. Mike, why don't you kick it off because yep. uh, it ties into the top of the show. Yep, and I'm going with J.K. Dobbins taking it up to 100. I am. I wasn't. Look, I was not confident enough to make him my start of the week at the running back position, but I wanted to highlight that I am. If I have Dobbins and I'm, I'm, I, I am in a flex league, and I've been waiting to play him. I am now doing it with confidence. He is taking on the Dallas Cowboys, who of course just gave me the Thanksgiving miracle of Antonio Gibbs season. But it's been all year that you've seen monster performances. The 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 Cleveland backfield in week four, Arizona. You, remember when Kenyon Drake was left for dead? And then Kenyon Drake had a monster game. Uh, so I, I, the, the matchup is good. And I believe that they are making the transition that J.K. Dobbins will be the leader of the timeshare. And hopefully he's on the field about 60 to 65% of the snaps. All right, Jason, who's your taking it up to 100 player for week 13? It's going to be Raheem Mostert back from injury, and last week the, you you saw him get a, get a good amount of utilization. He had 16 carries, but he didn't do much with it. He ran for 2.7 a carry, which is the opposite of what he usually does. He's a big breakaway play guy, and against the Los Angeles Rams, we've been saying this for you know last month and a half. Is it you've got to take them as one of the elites of the elite. Uh, even against running backs, they they shut him down. They are a top five uh, defense against running backs. He got a touchdown, but didn't do much. This week against Buffalo, uh, as a home game, granted they're in Arizona, I, I think Raheem Mostert is going to uh, just scorch the field, have a breakaway touchdown, and fully take it to 100. All right, I'm going to go with uh, Christian Kirk, actually, wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals. He had a, a three-week stretch where he was very impactful for fantasy players, but now it's been three weeks since we saw that. They're going to need Christian Kirk in this game. Larry Fitzgerald might not be back out there. DeAndre Hopkins will be lined up against Jalen Ramsey. This is a must-win home matchup for the Cardinals. You're going to have some deep shots to Christian Kirk in this one, and he's going to be the wide receiver that needs to take advantage of his opportunities if Arizona is going to win it. And so I'm going to go with Christian Kirk for my taking it up to 100 player this week. Now, Mike, Jason, you can take yes. your hair up to 100 with head and shoulders available at Walmart. Get those Pickers up today. out my yeah. face. No, get them out. Get them out. And uh, check out next Tuesday's episode. We'll reflect on on how right I was. Okay? We'll do okay. it then. All right, let's talk news. 
news and notes from around the league. I will throw this in there for Ravens news uh, real quick. The PCR test from this morning, I believe there were no additional positives. So oh, it does great. seem like maybe that uh, outbreak is under control of sorts. Roger Goodell has talked about maybe implementing some localized bubbles for personnel heading towards the NFL playoffs to try to take some control. I think they had 146 positive tests last week. So it's a reflection of what's going on around the country right now. So hopefully they can stay safe. Mm -hmm. And uh, some more news, COVID-related. Adam Thielen, Jonathan Taylor, both activated off of the reserve list. Fantastic. Yeah, that's good. That's nice. Zach Ertz activated from injured reserve. Is okay. the Do is the Dallas Goddard uh, experience coming to a close here? We've had a couple of nice Hopefully weeks. Goddard not. looked like a viable option. No, I, I don't. I don't think it will be. I mean, if if you think about it, uh, Richard Rodgers has been better than Zach Ertz was when he was on the field. Um, and in reality, last year uh, Dallas Goddard was a usable fantasy asset, even when Zach Ertz was really good um and and playing well so i i think i think goddard is here to stay and that's that means here to stay as a as a top you know six or seven tight end which still is going to stink some weeks but uh zach Ertz isn't isn't taking dallas goddard's you know fantasy production away heads up would you play goddard over Ertz right now yes yes okay Todd Gurley, Julio Jones, both limited in practice on Wednesday. We'll monitor their status for the upcoming week. Daniel Jones didn't practice. We don't think he'll play. All right. This is good news, potentially. Lions uh, interim head coach, Daryl Bevel. Optimistic about DeAndre Swift's chances of returning this week. I think he'll be back out there. Are you guys with I me? Do. Yeah, I do too. Yes. It's not, not, a, not a great matchup, but you're going to plug him in. He was just so on fire before the unfortunate uh, concussion. And then we've talked a lot about, you know, Will Fuller heading into a, uh, it's a contract year. He had the suspension after breaking out of sorts and staying healthy. We haven't really noted that fact with Kenny Galladay, and yet he's been injured throughout the year. He mm -hmm. did not practice on Wednesday. Not a good sign. Could miss his fifth consecutive game after missing some earlier in the year. And Kenny Galladay is a free agent as well, gentlemen. Mm. Uh, obviously a difference maker and has been healthy traditionally, but, um, or historically, I mean, any thoughts to, you know, does he stay on this team and, and do we want him there? I think when you fire your GM and you fire your head coach and you're trying to, re you know, rebuild, I think this thing is going to be torn down to the nuts and bolts. I, I don't, I don't think any player outside of maybe Swift, um, is, going to be you know and, and you know maybe akuda and you know some of the, wow. some of the young so guys you're saying like you think Stafford's stafford stafford holiday i don't think any of them are safe even stafford th this last week was saying you know when he's talking about his future he's like we'll talk about that some other day it was not a Oof. boat of confidence so yeah i mean uh, obviously they could resign them both they're great players i think they should it's always funny to me when you say we're gonna build our team better by Getting rid of by getting rid good, of the good but, players, by getting rid of some good players, <laughs> um, you know. But at the same time, it's uh, you you can't you can't be confident in the future of Kenny Galladay as a Lion right now. Oh man, I I heard Patrick Mahomes giving a lot of credit to Matthew Stafford earlier in the week, and and uh, you know the way he or maybe it was Aaron Rodgers actually that gave credit yes. to Matthew yeah, Stafford, yeah. and it does make you think about what kind of career Stafford has you know, the arm talent and the ability and skill. If you just like, I don't know, dropped him with Andy Reid somewhere, what mm -hmm. kind of career does Matthew Stafford have? Because I think we have all seen it for long enough to know how tough he is, the the arm talent, all of that. But that's that's how it works. <laughs> I, I love Stafford. I like, do too. <laughs> that dude's awesome. He's just, he's you know, when you, when you watch a guy grit it out and tough it out and play through everything and he, he – He's just one of the fun players to watch. You know, Mike likes him because he wears his, you know, he wears his hat backwards. That's so right. That's pretty cool. That's what cool guys. And we do. wear snapbacks. That's right, Maddie snapback. Oh, also, as I call them, hats, hats. <laughs> uh, all right, let's let's get into the forecast. But before we do that, I want to thank today's sponsor, HelloFresh. You've heard about HelloFresh. You know how convenient delivery right to your doorstep is, especially right now. And this is easy home cooking for the family, and you don't have to think about nothing. It's awesome. 
You can save 40% by using HelloFresh versus shopping at your local grocery store. That number blows people away, I think, because you think, okay, I'm going to trade costs for convenience. You don't make that kind of... This is win-win, all right? That's what I'm saying here. More than win-win-win. Win-win-win-win. 20 chef-crafted delicious options every week that you have to choose from. You get to try new things. Uh, Everybody in the family is going to enjoy this. You've got 20-minute meals now. You've got low-calorie, vegetarian. Uh, Word on the street is Mr. Jason Moore's down 14 LBs Mm -hmm. over the last couple weeks. And uh, look, you can find something for everybody. We love it. And you can go to HelloFresh.com slash Fantasy90 right now and use the code Fantasy90 and you get, guess guess what, $90 off you. Oh, I can't kidding. believe it. I remember, no. when this was, I remember when it was Fantasy 80. Now, this, I mean, no, you tell me, been, what do you want? Yeah, we're going to get to uh, 100 <laughs> soon. Uh, Fantasy 90 is the code. You get $90 off, including free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash Fantasy 90. And the code is Fantasy 90 to get $90 off plus free shipping. Fantasy Forecast. All right, the New Orleans Saints at nine and two take on the Atlanta Falcons, who are four and seven right now. But maybe a bit of a trap for fantasy players these days. The Saints are two and a half point favorites. It's a forty five and a half point over under. And they have, you know, the implied point total in this game, twenty four for the Saints, twenty one for the Falcons. Falcons coming off a, an absolute drubbing. Yeah, uh, over the the Raiders, and it's a, this is an interesting game because you have Taysom Hill Taysom Hill behind center again. The questions around Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, and the Falcons. This is not the 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 Falcons of of the early part of the year on defense. Yeah, I mean that's that is a fair thing to say, uh, it, but. The New Orleans Saints are one of the best teams in the NFL. Like I'm not concerned about the Saints uh, against the Atlanta Falcons. I don't. I don't really? feel like it's. I'm not. I'm not concerned that there is a from an a offensive trap. perspective. You're not concerned right. about the Saints' offense. Correct. I, as I'm concerned about where do those fantasy points go. I, I should say I'm not concerned at, at all with Taysom Hill. I mean, it, Taysom okay. Hill has has proven to me that he will get it done for fantasy, mostly because he's going to put up you know, 50 plus rushing yards at the chance at multiple rushing touchdowns and is still, and still has Michael Thomas who the the one actual good game we saw from Michael Thomas was a couple weeks ago against these Atlanta Falcons. Now actual concern is what is the split between Alvin Kamara and Latavius Murray? Murray is getting far more work. Uh, We talked about after that first week of like Sean Payton is a good offensive coach, and he, no, know, knowing that he had a plan for Taysom Hill and he was going to give Taysom Hill the 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 shot, he's not going to force Taysom Hill to be Drew Brees. And this, and we've seen that turn into Alvin Kamara's not getting targets. Now I know last week against Denver, you, you basically have to throw that game out. Uh, but there, it's troubling for the ceiling of Alvin Kamara versus Latavius Murray. I mean, they, I, they're they're. You know, right now we have Kamara at like our running back twelve and Latavius at running back twenty four. I don't know that the gap should be even that big. Yeah, I mean, Atlanta is number two against the run, by the way, over the last six weeks, and number three on the season. They are very good at stopping the run. Yeah, sure. part part of the reason early that they were so good at stopping the run is because it was so easy to pass on them. You 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 really didn't. You just it was one of those reverse funnel defenses. But when you look at over the entire course of the season, really being able to not give up fantasy points to the running back position, this just projects to me to be a really low scoring game. I mean, two weeks ago the the Saints held these Falcons to nine real life NFL points. Uh, there's not a lot of fantasy production that's going to come from that if New Orleans is slowing the game down with Taysom and playing such great defense, which, which now, they Julio are. Now, Julio was They're banged just, up in that game, right? He was My, banged up. So he started the game, he finished the game, but there was a, a chunk in the middle where 35% he was, of the snaps. I mean, that was, yeah, that was, so Julio wasn't involved. Yeah, he was. He he missed a, a good portion of that game. 
Um, obviously, that makes a huge difference for Matt Ryan. We've talked about that. With I think he's a. I think the Rulio eleven is not in play here. I think Matt Ryan is a sit no matter what happens. Mm. Yeah, because because you have a ri- you have a risk with Julio if he does play this week, and then the Saints' defense has just been the best in football over the last six weeks. Number two against fantasy quarter, they're giving up ten fantasy points a game to opposing fantasy quarterbacks. Yeah, I'd I guess much I, rather, I. Yeah, go ahead. I'd much rather play Kirk Cousins this week. I would much rather play uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, presuming he is the starter against the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, I'd rather play Cam Newton. Against the Chargers, I like. I'm I'm with you, Andy. I'm I'm pretty much just out Can I on Matt Ryan. Throw a name out there. Yeah, sure. Asking for a friend. <laughs> Better not uh, be Derek Carr. <laughs> no, that's that, a that good one. That would be one. another question. <laughs> that's a though, good one because, New, of course, it should be Derek Carr. Yes, because, but because yes. we made him a start last week and he had negative fantasy points, we feel we can't recommend it. But the the, the true recommendation, if you take that bias and that that short term uh, memory, you know, you gotta you gotta have the memory loss there and just play the odds. I I think Derek Carr is a better play yes. than Matt Ryan. I have this Derek week, Carr ranked I, higher than Matt I Ryan. I was going to ask you Carson Wentz <laughs> or Matt Ryan. <laughs> no way, man. That one I'm out. That one that the actual matchup doesn't make sense. Like Carson Wentz against the Green Bay Packers secondary. Uh I I'm I'm fine. I love Miles Sanders against that run defense, but no, no, no Carson Wentz. So you like Taysom Hill, and I get it. Uh, you know, I'm not looking at Atlanta just because they've improved on defense and saying, you know, they're going to shut down this entire offense. But I'm with Jason on the on the narrative. Like, I would take the under in this game. I think this game could be uh, more competitive than, than Week 10. I don't know if Julio's back out there. Calvin Ridley, it looked like he was leaving with another injury. If he's out there, you're playing him. Yes. But the running back room, you know, last week people threw Brian Hill in there. Anito Smith had a better game. Todd Gurley's back in practice. And the Saints are too good against the opposing fantasy running backs. I mean, 9.5 points per game given up over the last six weeks. I think you could just, I don't know, bench all three of them and just be content to move forward with somebody else this week. I'm, I'm sure we'd all play Gore over any of these options. Yes, I, I agree with that. The, the fact that, like, if Todd Gurley is in fact back he's getting all the limited practices or if he ends up doing that limited on wednesday says to me he probably will suit up but it's gonna be what what will the snap breakdown be between him and brian hill i think it's a sketchy start for any of the atlanta falcons so do you flex latavius murray oh yeah yeah i do over melvin gordon against kansas city would you play him over melvin i would not I, I don't think play, I'd play him over Melvin. I'd play either. Melvin. I mean, well, and Melvin has the – Philip Lindsay is is hurt, if, if yeah. you remember. So if, if Melvin Gordon's all alone with the Denver Broncos, then you have a lot more confidence. What about Dobbins, who you like taking it to 100? Would you, would you roll Dobbins over Latavius? I would. I would as well. And then Jared Cook's kind of been deleted alongside Alvin Kamara's yeah. passing work. Uh, Adam Troutman's playing more snaps right now. Cook is just Which not – Which is crazy. I did not realize use him. this. Yeah, you can't use them right now. There's just not a trust with the passing work from Taysom Hill, who I think is still yet to throw an NFL touchdown. Is this is that, that is accurate? Correct. Okay, that that is accurate. And just a quick dynasty note: he's probably not on your wire, but there is a chance that Adam Troutman was left alone there. I think that you should pick him up. All right, um, Hayden Hurst, you're okay on the outskirts of the tight end department yeah yeah you, well yeah you might be yeah. forced into it i, I mean you, on the falcon <laughs> side of the ball it's it's you might be forced into hayden hurst you're going to start calvin ridley Look, julio's questionable i mean I, you're, guys you're probably going to start julio if he's out there you could do worst mm. then hayden hurst yeah okay yeah come well, on that was a good well, one it's just the you you gave yeah, us yeah i think it's crickets you gave us the pause it was such a setup yeah, you know, I like, had guys, to say guys, 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 be quiet, guys, be quiet. Because you had to hear my you incredible could do worst. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> a good joke. Thank you. I'll be here. I all guess week. for a remote recording, it's pretty. It's all right. It's not bad for remote. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the Detroit Lions at four and seven take on the Chicago Bears, who are remotely a joke. It's it's just from. <laughs> that's remote. a better joke, right? That's, that's, a, that's a better joke. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Al. Uh, the Bears are five and six in a tailspin here. Bears are three point favorites. 
Uh, okay, divisional matchup between the, the two teams that are now on the bottom. Mitch Trubisky is going to start this game. Matt Nagy has a, a, a funny air to him these days when asked about the quarterback. It's almost like he's just accepted his reality, finally. What's the quote? I'm trying to remember off the top of my yeah, head. Yeah, is he had Mitchell a couple Trubisky going to play quarterback? And he I said, don't see why I not. See why <laughs> I don't see why not. I mean, <laughs> who says that? everything I, is everything. You, you are the head coach. Uh, you can feel like that in your heart. Like deep down in your spirit, you know and you recognize that Mitchell Trubisky is not the answer. Nick Foles, that was probably a swing and a miss. He's not the answer either. But you are the head coach. You are the CEO of the team. You can't be out there in public going, I Whatever, guess. man. Whatever, but, man. Sure. But, the, but you've been begging him not to be such a magician. He, The opposite this of this is, is still, going. Man, this is still Job illusions. Like, if he had been out there, like, yeah, did you see? Like, we saw a lot of positive stuff from Mitchell Trubisky last week. And, yes, he will be the starter moving forward. He might as well have said, what other options do I got? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And that's not. How do you inspire confidence in your offense? Like, Allen Robinson, your your superstar wide receiver, is he's going to be a free agent, and you're over here just like, yeah, whatever, man. I don't really care. I don't care anymore about That's this how it offense. Feels. Now I, you know, I'm going to get fired at the Allen end of the year. Robinson, I don't care. Allen Robinson had a nice game. He's top five in the league in targets. You're going to play Allen Robinson against Detroit. You're going to play absolutely David Montgomery, who's been great against a terrible Detroit uh, running defense. Yes. And that's going to be the end of your Chicago offense. Um, is there any temptation to play anybody else? I know Mooney had air yards, but they're always empty. And I mean, that's no. it, right? No, that that that's it. Uh, you know, in a in a multiple quarterback league, you might be able to sneak in a you know a second you know quarterback of Mitch Trubisky. I, I don't even think I'm rolling with Jimmy Graham. Um, I I think he is doing worse than Hayden Hurst. So <laughs> that's uh, fair. Yeah, I, I mean, Allen Robinson, I think should have a great game. Um, Trubisky scrambling because of the bad offensive line play has helped them sustain a few drives, and so I, I think it's an upgrade for Allen Robinson at this point. And I'm happy, I'm thrilled to play those two and and nobody else from the Bears. I, I agree think, with that. I think Mooney is in play as a lower lower tier wide receiver four. Like if you're looking to lose your week, you could always slide him in. Nah, look, there's leagues out there that are three no, wide receiver and a flex. I, nine, I get it. They were it was very empty, but it's still nine targets, and that was like Trubisky hadn't played football since what week two, week three. I just think I, there's got to be better options than than Mooney. He's had I, one fantasy relevant week all year. I actually think that he is. You know, there. Look, people are in different situations, and um. You know, take take Al Borland, right? He's in a situation where um, he's wanting to lose. He's playing for a higher pick. <laughs> and I think Darnell Mooney is a great play if you're in that situation where the, this is a legitimate option. Uh, he's getting a lot of air yards, a lot of targets. You can you can justify it. And it's probably not going to help. I, I feel like it's the exact same. Like Mooney and Marvin Hall are in the same boat. If you do get lucky and they connect on something, I'm going to lean on the side of Matthew Stafford. You're not going to have Kenny Galladay out there. Marvin Jones... Look, he's not really a high upside play against a really good Chicago Bears passing defense, in my opinion. So you're looking at, you know, Stafford's not an option to me. DeAndre Swift, if he's back on the field, he's going to get the majority of the work. And okay, hopefully you could go, you could go Swift, but I, I just don't like what I'm seeing on the Detroit side. Yeah, I, I would start Swift. I realize it's not a great matchup against the Bears, but over the last six weeks, they're they're middle of the pack against running backs. And DeAndre Swift, uh, you know, was was so good right before um the, the the injury. So I I think Swift is is fine. But yeah, you're you're really downgrading all the other pass catching options against a very good uh Chicago Bear defense. I, and I you know outside of T.J. Hawkinson, I think he's you know it's funny when we look at these matchups with. He, we're talking about, oh, it's so hard. We don't like the passing games. But Hayden Hurst and TJ Hawkinson are like, yeah, yeah, well, you got to start them because tight ends are so, so crappy. The bar is so low. Cleveland Browns at 8-3. and three, Tennessee Titans at 8-3. and three. This is an exciting game. Uh, the Titans are six-point favorites, but it's got a 54-point over-under. And, you know, Derek Yeti and company getting it going. 
I know Jason loves Ryan Tannehill this week in particular. This is the game you want this week. Highest over under. And this over under says to me that I realize both these teams are, are run first teams. This is the passing games are going to matter in this game. You have two defenses that are not good at all against the pass. And when teams, you know, as, as the game goes on and teams start scoring, pa the passing game is going to open up for both teams. I, I really want the pieces in this game. Yeah, I don't know if I'm as bullish as you are on Tannehill, but I definitely see the upside this week. And A.J. Brown gives you upside every week. Uh, so Brown, Henry, and then Tannehill. Corey, Corey Davis is in play. Um, he's actually uh, our wide receiver 23 on the week. Yes, so. he is. And he's. I have to bring him up here because he's my start of the week. We're going to talk about him later. Okay, yeah, the Browns have been a lot better against the pass over the last six weeks, uh, sixth in the NFL. Against yeah, but uh, opposing fantasy of, wideouts because they were assisted by the environment for mm -hmm. three weeks. Sure, sure, that is possible. That we is, didn't get to... yeah. I mean, it's. I I think that's that's what what happened. We've been I've been talking about Baker, um, and the fact that you know his his chance to show the post Odell Beckham it just hasn't been there because of this unbelievable stretch of timing where almost every game since then he's been in some kind of snow sleet wind rain bowl game haven't we um, had a chance to see him though all of the rest of his career to know yeah. what he does at quarterback at the quarterback position i mean yeah I'm, i mean i'm i'm certainly not saying that baker mayfield is someone i want to uh, start over other options in a two quarterback league i think baker is is in play and is fine because of the matchup um you know but he he can do enough even if he throws a couple interceptions, that's, you know, it's like Jameis. It's one of those things where, yes, yeah, it's, it's not good for his fantasy production and it's not good for, uh, you know, the, the Browns, but it's great for needing to throw more and get the wide receiver numbers up. And I, I, I do think that this is, I think I, I would take the over on this game. Kareem Hunt. Help me think about Kareem Hunt heading into the fantasy playoffs. There are a couple of factors that are giving me some concern in terms of being able to rely on him. For one, he had his lowest like kind of percentage share of the rushing last week of the entire year. Since Chubb return, he's been the RB 13, 29, and 32. But it's more than that. It's not just last week. It's the fact that he's been dealing with this thigh injury, which he was once again quite, uh, limited in Wednesday's practice. It has me wondering if some of his workload reduction has to do with kind of monitoring and dealing with an injury. Uh, sure. Where where are you with uh, with Kareem Hunt? I I'm sitting here in the league deciding between a player like Kareem Hunt or rolling out a uh, like a Benny Snell uh, if if he's mm. alone in the backfield next week. And I just don't know if I have the confidence in Hunt right now. I would say that bet between those two, if Benny Snell is or if James Conner's out for Pittsburgh, then I I would strongly consider going Benny Snell if this is a running back two situation. I am adjusting how I think of Kareem, where he was, I mean, he was a locked-in running back two and basically a borderline running back one. But I think that those uh, under-the-radar things like you're talking about, Andy, the nursing and injury, uh, Nick Chubb is fresh i know he's he's coming back from an injury but his body is fresh in terms of he has not taken uh a ton of nfl work a ton of uh, nfl body shots from professional defenders and last week against jacksonville that was uh that was nick chubb's second highest snap share of the season in week two he was at 62 percent and this past week against jacksonville he was at 61 percent getting 20 opportunities a game we know, we know the opportunities will be there but if he's on the field and Kareem Hunt is not, then and it seems like they are trying to get Kareem Hunt ready for a playoff push uh, until we're sure that Kareem Hunt is back to that close to 50-50 timeshare. You just you got to play him only as a flex. You agree with that, Jason? Um, I agree with a lot of what he said. I, I do think that the matchup here against Tennessee is, is phenomenal for both Chubb and Hunt, so that, that pushes me more to the Hunt side. The upside. I mean, I I haven't seen anything out of Benny Snell that makes me think he's good. He's got the opportunity, um, uh, you know, and so he'll get the carries. But uh, if you're telling me who has the better opportunity for a touchdown, even 
even though it's split, I probably go Kareem Hunt. If you look at fantasy points allowed above opponent average, the new metric I've been working on, Tennessee's the fourth worst against running backs in the league. It's Detroit, Houston, Green Bay, which we all know, like smash, yes, you got to play your running backs against them. And then it's Tennessee. Um, they, they have been far worse against the running backs they've faced than their opponents have been. So I just love the matchup. I, I So I think the matchup makes Hunt a great play, but I do agree with what you brought up, Andy. I think they're limiting him a little bit on purpose because of the injury situation. That's why his snap percentages were low, and we won't know until we see it on the field when he's fully over that. Yeah, I've been a little uh, disappointed in the passing game work as well. You know that he's their third down back, but over the last two games he has one reception. So that part has been uh, hurting the baseline for Kareem Hunt. The matchup's juicy, so it's hard to sit him for somebody else, as you said. I like Austin Hooper. John New Smith, I think, should be off of your tight end starting list right now because he's dealing with an injury and coming off a goose. There's just no reason to you know, take that shot. There are plenty of other uh, horrible tight ends to choose from. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, uh, if I was – I like – I had Al Borland ask me about uh, John New if he's active versus Trey Burton, I'd play Burton in that situation. I don't have the confidence in Johnny right now. Sure. Jo John who over the last seven games this is not a very, it's almost half a season over the last seven games. He is averaging 1.7 receptions oh. per game. This oh. is, this is why, uh, it's Corey Davis. This fault. is not meant to be a toot toot. This is meant to be a, let's reflect for a second. I felt like because we saw so much of John who last year, because what when did uh, Delaney Walker went out? Like week one or two It was, two it was or pretty early, like yeah. We got to see him on display, and the consistency just wasn't there. He is a dynamic, great player, but for whatever reason, I feel like the ship has sailed on him being in every week. He's never going to ascend to that top five type of tight end category. And I could be wrong, but the, the team seems to be willing to build the game plan and include Ferkser and these other pieces. So... It's disappointing because he's yep. one of the few dynamic tight ends in football that give you yep. big playability. Career-wise, I wouldn't write him off just yet. He's only no. 25 years old. No. And like but, I mean, you mentioned Delaney Walker. <clears throat> how, how long was Delaney Walker in the, I think the he, league before he turned into Delaney Walker? I think Delaney Walker started to get good about 30. Yeah. It's true, but uh, there's probably a lot more tight ends that go the opposite direction right. than, than that way. The Cincinnati Bengals at two eight and one take on the Miami Dolphins, who are seven and four and eleven and a half point favorites in this game. It's a forty two point over under. Crap! What if you told Dolphins fans last year in the middle of their disastrous season that uh, next year you'll be eleven and a half point favorites in a game? They would say, "Wow, Tua must have done something unbelievable." That's true, and he kind of uh, hasn't. It's been Ryan Fitzpatrick's show when this team has succeeded, but this is this line is not about the Dolphins and who's starting a quarterback. This line is about the Bengals and who's starting a quarterback. Yeah, uh, and their the, line. Yeah, it's a 15-point uh, implied total for the Bengals. That's not a lot. I have zero confidence with anybody on the Bengals' offense mm -hmm. because there are a lot of passing game options. Boyd, Higgins... Green could show up, sample, whatever. I If I had to, you say, please play a Bengals wide receiver. Do it or else. I will play T. Higgins. That's who I'll play. I saw enough of him getting targeted last week to where I would shoot my shot with T. Higgins over Tyler Boyd because Boyd represents more of the... It's like, it's like you telling me pick Perryman or Crowder with a bad Jets quarterback. I'm just going to yeah, go especially for... Especially when the answer is Mims. <laughs> I don't know about that. Right, AJ Green's going to be the actual one that's that's the good answer here. Yeah, I, I would go Boyd personally, but I agree with what you're saying. Higgins Andy. was actually the 22nd wide receiver last week. That's because he got the touchdown. Um, he he didn't. Which do, are the odds are on him to get the touchdown? I I would say that. I would say the odds are on no none of them getting a touchdown. Um, but if you have to pick one of them for a touchdown, it's it's Higgins. If you're in a PPR league, Tyler Boyd will probably sure. lead the team in targets again. But the the real the reality here is we're in either your first week of the playoffs or when to get in in the playoffs. I don't want to rely on any of these guys. I would I would look to pivot to um, there's there's plenty of other options that I would probably start over any one of these uh, Bengals wide receivers or not just wide receivers. I mean, 
Gio Bernard, Giovanni has he, – he's getting the whole workload. He's doing yeah. nothing with it. I he's don't want to start Giovanni Bernard, Boyd, Higgins, A.J. Green. I, I don't think there is a bang, uh, Bengal that um, I would recommend anybody to start. Yeah, uh, three straight weeks for Gio as the quote-unquote feature back, and he's not been in the top 30. So, uh, Tua, limited practices, uh, same as last week. Right now, I think we imagine it's going to be Fitzpatrick. Look, Tua, heal up, man. You got it. The NFL is tough. It is it is tough, tough stuff, and you don't want to be out there with that thumb situation. This right, is the Fitzpatrick? worst fantasy versus reality situation <laughs> that you could have because we all know it's true. It's like the... You know, it's like the Jameis situation where you thought, you know, Jameis, what he represents for fantasy versus reality. I'm, Ryan Fitzpatrick I'm, means that De Devontae Parker is a top option. I'm curious. I'm going to reach out to, uh, I only know one Dolphins fan. Like, I'm only friends with one of them because, you know, they're the Dolphins. But I'm going to reach out and I'm going to see, we'll, like, get a, see if we can get a pulse here on do Dolphins fans want Fitzpatrick starting right now? Sure. You're sure. seven ask, ask your one friend, Mike. And, and I will. We'll, <laughs> and that will serve as the example for all fan base. I'll, I'll put it out on Twitter as well. Because, hey, dude, you're seven and four. You could win this division. And to, to a, I think Tua lowers your chances of winning the division right now. It, it's really hard, too, because they're, they're pretty good defense. So you ask if you're going to win with a defense, do you want to theoretically lower your turnover chance, which is called not playing Ryan Fitzpatrick, or do you want the upside of being able to come back in a game, which two is not going to do that either. It, he just represents very, uh, there's no polarity there where it's like Fitzpatrick could give you a, a nine out of 10 game or a two out of 10 game. And I feel like Tua can give you like a four or a four. I, can't. <laughs> I, I feel like Fitzpatrick though has been far more on that 10 scale for I mean, quite a while now. But it, don't you think that that's being colored by the the fantasy side of things? I mean, his uh, perhaps. I perhaps. mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of hard. What do, What do you do with other options there? In but uh, he's twelve to eight. By the way, touchdown to interception ratio. Right now. I wanted to look at that for Fitzpatrick. But other options there. Uh, Miles Gaskin's still not activated. He's in his twenty one day activation window. I, I do expect him to be yes, activated and be the starter. He's a guy that if he is activated, I I will start. Um, you okay. got Ahmed there, but I was reading uh, you know a, a beat reporter for the Dolphins who writes for Sports Illustrated, um, expecting a big week for Gaskin. Uh, okay. That that's what I'm basing this on. You know, insider. Uh, he he should know more about the the health and the split of that backfield than Miles I do Gaskin. from afar. Miles Gaskin, <laughs> he's gonna kill it um, on the field. So he's who oh, I would go and with. He's, wait, is it? And he's playing the he's playing a tiger team. Come on, oh, it's brother. all there. <laughs> that's a that's a by, by all there I mean like tie -in. five layers deep of sure. of going through the meme world. All right, so Carol Baskin's a start this week. Um, <laughs> Devontae Parker is a start this week. Mike Gesicki? Yeah, Fitzpatrick kinda tricky. starts. If Fitzpatrick yeah. starts, I, I would start him. Um, Devontae Parker is a, a can't if, – if Fitzpatrick is the starter, you can't bench him. He's He should be a, a wide receiver one this week. You don't get layers of meme analysis with other shows, and that's really that's what right. we want to bring your way. Jacksonville that's, – That's why you're ranked top six right now. In the industry, Andy, we're, oh, we're this far thank in. Thank you for the you're, shout you're out, ranked baby. Top six um, <laughs> right. in rankings is because of your your meme work, right? And obviously, by extension, we'll move on to the next matchup. But Miles Gaskin would perform well against the Jacksonville Jaguars as well, of course, on on the same logic basis. Jacksonville's one and ten; they did win their first game this year. Um, that was it. And then Minnesota five and six. And, and, and to clarify, you don't mean oh they just got their first win of the season. They won their very first game. Oh, I, yes. I apologize. Yes, they, they stink. Vikings are 10-point favorites. It's a 52.5 point over-under. Minnesota's playing very well right now, especially their quarterback. Uh, Kirk Cousins has been uh, getting it done week in and week out. Dalvin Cook, yep. We'll talk about Cousins more later, but I like him this week a lot. Jefferson Thielen, okay. 
No doubt. You play them both. Really not complicated on the Minnesota side because there's not a lot of nuance. There's not a lot of peripheral options. You're not looking at their tight end position with Thielen yeah. back. Say so Kyle Rudolph, that, that was fun. Like, I hope you enjoyed that week. But Kyle Rudolph will go back to his, you hope he scores a touchdown because he won't be seeing the targets anymore. Isn't that, that that's, you know, seven, seven last week with no Irv Smith and no Adam Thielen. And it's over. You're right. You got yeah. your one week. This is this is a really easy game to walk through because you have studs and duds. It's you know, like you said, is that the two different teams? Is that (laughs) kind of Uh, cousins? Dalvin Cook, Adam Thielen, Justin Jefferson. Nobody's not going to be starting them already, so nothing to really discuss there. No one else on that roster you're going to start. And on the other side, you've got James Robinson. There's one man, yeah, and he's in. And the only questionable player in this entire game is just DJ Chark. Uh, if assuming he is active for the game, he he missed this last week with injury. If he's back out there, I would take him over the likes of the Bengals wide receivers. Sure, I would take DJ Chark over the Tyler Boyd's and and uh, T Higgins and AJ Greens. But he's not someone that I'm like, oh man, I hope he's back because I can't wait to get him in my lineup type of type of player with Mike Glennon back there. It's yeah, uh, DJ Chark is a very difficult read. This week, because the Minnesota matchup is they they have been improving uh, on the defensive side of the ball, but it's you can still squeeze some juice out of this matchup. And Mike Lennon was not incompetent the last I, week, and I mean you saw you saw Colin Johnson. Well, that's the name I wanted to bring up. The only name I actually do want to bring up. But Colin Johnson only played because DJ, or he only saw the snaps because DJ Chark was out. I mean, if you look back uh, that was that was his first game action really ever uh, other than you know averaging maybe 20 percent of the snaps before that so, and that turned into for Colin Johnson that turned into eight targets four for 96 and a touchdown because they had the really big play uh but I mean he if, if DJ Chark is active like, I'm not even considering the the crazy Hail Mary play that is Colin Johnson but does the success of Colin Johnson give you some DJ Chark confidence against this matchup? Not me, no. I think Colin Johnson is a real, is a desperate play, but one that will receive a ton of targets if Chark is out. You could have seen Chenault have take advantage or Cole take advantage. It wasn't them. It was it was the rookie, which um, you know is interesting to me. But no, I don't. I don't really want to mess around. Let's not mess around with this this passing game on a third string quarterback. Can we make that pledge? Can we leave them yes. alone? Uh, yes. Why Chark. mess with them? You can flex, Chark. I don't. I don't know about that. All right. The Raiders six and five. The Jets zero oh and eleven. Raiders are eight point favorites after getting just uh, destroyed by the Falcons. Forty six and a half point over under. That's eight point road favorites, by the way. And here we are again. Uh, by the way, the here the we Bear, are. The Bears should go get Sam Darnold. That's Ooh, what they should do. Yeah. They should because the the Jets are going to have Trevor Lawrence, and Sam Darnold's going to be done. Mm-mm. Jake Jason's shaking his head. No, Sam Darnold is nobody's answer. I think Sam Darnold's career has been ruined by the Jets, and you're sticking uh, a fork in Sam Darnold. You don't think he can be resurrected by another franchise? Yeah, that's correct. I don't think he can be resurrected. I think he's developed too many fears too many bad habits you know when when you spend the first couple years of your life scrambling for your life and having no scheme to help you and no players to help you you just develop bad tendencies bad habits I don't think anybody's rescuing him and certainly not the Bears if he goes to the Chicago Bears it it might be a worse offensive line he he would just start running back to the to to the end zone back to college yes like take me back you're, you're he's only twenty three. He's Adam only twenty three. He's twenty three years old. Oh, that's a good point, Mike. And uh, so you know, he came into the league so young. Like the yeah. gap between him and Trevor Lawrence is two years. So At, I, I'm not going to bury him yet. Like I'm not gonna maybe the Bears is not the place that you want him to go. But my point is, is some team should potentially take a shot on Sam Darnold. One hundred percent. And Adam Gase. Uh, Adam Gase breaks the players down so that somebody else can build them back up and turn them into superstars. But let's uh let's break this game down. I on paper you should be able to play Derek Carr. 
Will I hit the drop? No, I won't. Will I allow <laughs> Al to do it without firing him? No, I won't. What kind of paper are we talking about here? Uh, construction paper with the, crayons? The, pa- the paper that, that tells you that the Jets' defense is the worst in football over the last six weeks against opposing fantasy quarterbacks. The, uh, the, the paper that, that paper. says he's ranked inside of my top 10 quarterbacks to play this week. Shh, and if you want to play that. him, you can look at my rankings and you can make that decision. <laughs> that's You're not <laughs> endorsing him. You've just that's, put him there. It's on it's you. I, it's what I believe, but I'm not going to personally. This is not a personal endorsement situation. It, it, it Actually, our rankings this week, it says he who shall not be named in place of this quarterback. So, um. Okay, so beyond if Derek Carr is going to throw the football to another player, it's probably Darren Waller. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Yeah, we can play that. But and the Jets' defense, thirty-eight fantasy points given up to opposing fantasy wide receivers over the last six weeks. Thirty-eight fantasy points to break down between uh, Nelson Aguilar, Henry Ruggs, and company. Are you willing to, like, we've been at the bottom of the barrel with the Bengals wide receivers and DJ Chark. Is Aguilar above all of those? I Because he is Ag- to me. I would put Aguilar above the, the Bengals. This is what I was saying when we were talking about Cincinnati is that there's other options out there I would rather play, you know, where, where you have an opportunity for real fantasy production. You, you don't have that opportunity with a third-string quarterback. Um, and, and Derek Carr, if he has a bad game, a horrific game, you're not going to get much. Um, you know, Nelson Aguilar wasn't, wasn't good last week because Derek Carr was atrocious, but even still he had six targets, five receptions. He's the leader of this wide receiver core against the jets. It should work out. And I, I, I would, I would start him, you know, he, he's again, not one of those guys were saying you got to get Aguilar. He's a start of the week type of player, but he is someone you can turn to in this win and get in situation over the likes of those Bengals. I would play Chark over Aguilar. I would as well if he's, uh, act, if he's active. Josh Jacobs, Gino if he Hammer starts, Smith. you start him. He is still working through the injury. Didn't practice on Wednesday. If he's out, are you confident with Devontae Booker in this matchup? Yes. Elite pass catcher <laughs> on the field a lot, and the way that you said emphatic. that is frightening. It's emphatic. Of course I'm confident about uh, you know the the only he's he would be the only running back left, and this is the Jets team. And yeah, over the last six weeks, they've been you know top ten against running backs because they've been so bad against you, you. Just it's hard to be bad against everything because there's just not usually that many fantasy points to give up to every position. But on the course of the year, they're bad. I don't think they fixed anything. I think the fantasy points just haven't come against them uh, with the running back. And if he's the only man in town, I I would I would happily start Devontae Booker. Frank Gore, eat your prunes and play Frank Gore this week. It, what? Who was the original? Uh, now that we're getting to show 1,000, people have been posting their favorite memories of the show, which reminds me of the salad. Was it Sean Drone? No. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. it was. Sean salad. Was, yeah, he was the big salad the because, bi- because he was getting like eight targets a game. I mean, this, Frank Gore is your fiber, fibrous salad. Oh, yeah. And your, in your team right now. <laughs> Uh, Not a sponsor. He's very regular. Uh, Never will be now. He's extremely regular, and yet I'm I'm actually. I, here's the best part of this whole situation: Brooks and I are playing in our dynasty league for the division and a buy. Okay, mm-hmm. I have uh, CMC on the buy, and and uh, he has some injuries. He's playing Devonte Booker against me. And I am playing Frank Gore against him. <laughs> yes. Yes. And oh. that's what oh. we're that's gonna break down the division and the bye. Welcome to uh two flex dynasty extravaganza. I who would you rather have, Devontae Booker or Frank Gore in this game? Well Frank obviously Gore. Frank Gore if Josh Jacobs is active. Uh um, what, what if he's not? If he's not, I would definitely rather have Devontae Booker. Really? You, yeah, you want the running back who's you know on the team that's favored by eight points, that's projected to score more. I mean, th- that's Jaylen always going to be Jalen Richard is, is, I believe, practicing and going to be back. That's fine. Okay. I, I would still rather. I, I don't, you see I, how I, I do, said that, though, like in a way that it mattered? Did you right, hear, no, it was very hear my emphatic. tone? I was like, he's back. Yeah, Baby. he's back. Um, and, uh, it pains me to say this. If I had the button and we had Mike's almost upset of the week, I would be hitting the button. Oh my! 
Do you want do you want to borrow it? You want Thank to borrow you. it? Yes. <laughs> Andy. No, 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 no. I choose you as tribute. Week. I didn't pick one this week. Oh, well, well, I choose you as tribute. Here this it is, is, man. This is uh Mike's Andy's almost upset of the week. I will say this in your defense: the the what the what the Raiders have done all season is play to their competition. Exactly. Uh, I mean, they 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 go and they face Kansas City, almost beat them. They do beat them once, and they, and they look like world beaters out there. And then you know they play the Browns and they put up sixteen points. Uh, you know, and and the Falcons is last week and put up six points. So, uh, yeah, uh, I don't blame it. Well, I, mean, I don't look, blame it. <laughs> look, it's an almost upset. They don't even have to win. This is an eight-point spread. So what happens to John Gruden if they lose this game to the Jets after what happened last week? I think his, his face will literally remove itself from his body. I mean, who who can get redder, Bruce Arians or John Gruden? <laughs> uh, Bruce Arians is... I mean, he he is his is more always, permanent. His yeah. is more permanent. But Gruden, when he gets fiery, and he would be, he would be hot. All right, uh, Jameson Crowder, Brashad Perryman, Denzel Mims. Welcome to the Bengals part two. Pick pick somebody that you're willing to play this week. Um, I hate tempering Denzel Mim, Mims expectations because I love him so much and I loved him coming into the year, but he's not at the top of the list for me. This no, week. I mean I, I'm I. I Supporting Mims, but if I have to pick between the two of them, I would I'll still play Perryman over. I just wanted uh, all I've been trying to highlight is that like the 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 separation between Perryman and Mims is really not that big. Yeah, I I think that's probably fair. Yeah, that that is fair. I I would pick Perryman over him just because he's he's gotten it done. He's gotten the touchdowns. Um, but I still I still wonder about Crowder. He's worked his way back from the injury that kept him out a Crowder. couple of games. He, he's been. Uh, you know, he's been terrible since he's been back. But at, at some point, I do think he'll get healthy. And, I mean, you saw him the first. He's only got one game with Darnold since he's been back, too. Right. And, and you know, the early in the season when he had Darnold, you had 13 targets, 10 targets, 10 targets. He was the guy that you wanted and was reliable. He also um, didn't have Mims back then. That is that is true. Mims was not, Mims was not available in the beginning of the season. Uh, you find somebody else. For, for all <laughs> hey, you want to win this week don't don't find Bengals and jets wideouts and lean on them all right let's do starts starts of the week one of our promises to you out there for clan is that you won't hear Bengals or jets wide receivers in this segment of the show speak for that, yourself oh come on I'm just joking. Okay. Uh, you, <laughs> look, if, if, if any of us was going to just, <laughs> yeah, you know I feel like you would switch it. You'd be like, oh, yeah? <laughs> okay. Watch this. <laughs> Don't tell me how to live my life. That's right. All right. Let, let's let uh, let's go to you, Mike. Let's have you kick this off at the quarterback position. All right, Mike. My, my quarterback star of the week, it is Taysom Hill against Atlanta. He was the QB4 against them in his first start ever. I get that the, the Falcons defense has been a little bit better as of late. But the fact that we have seen Taysom start two times, and in both those games he has carried the ball ten times, and your your baseline is at least fifty yards on the ground, and the ceiling is multiple touchdowns. And I mean, he threw for over two hundred yards against his Falcons defense as well, so he can do that if he needs to unleash that part of his game as well. Jason. I'm going with Derek Carr. No, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't do that in back to back weeks. I'm going Ryan Tannehill. I've been uh, talking about it all week. I really love Tannehill this week at home against Cleveland. He's been extremely efficient. Fifth in fantasy points per drop back, completing seventy percent of his passes in the red zone. Uh, this is the highest over under of the week. Uh, I I I think that the passing games will come into play uh, for for both Cleveland and Tennessee. Uh, with Corey Davis stepping up and and AJ Brown being uh, a weapon, I mean, Ryan Tannehill's been really, really, really good for fantasy a lot of games. But this last six weeks, he's had a murderer's row of quarterback opponents: Pittsburgh, Chicago, Indianapolis, Baltimore, Indianapolis again, and even during that stretch, he's been a top ten quarterback the last two weeks. So I, I think you have to start Ryan Tannehill unless you've got some. Uh, phenomenal option. If you want a little cherry on top of that start of the week, uh, Titans coach Mike Vrabel just recently came out and said they need to throw the ball to Derrick Henry more. 
in the screen game. They oh, do. Oh, yeah. Which would help because Add one of the stats. problems uh, with Tannehill's ceiling is that Derrick Henry's kind of successful in the red zone. If he failed more, it would it would be easier on Tannehill's numbers. All right, I'm going to go with Kirk Cousins as my start of the week against Jacksonville. Nice. They've been especially awful against opposing quarterbacks. Uh, top 12 performances given up to them in four of the last five weeks. It was Mike's stream of the week, and since I chased Mike's stream of the week, Derek Carr last week, this has to work out. <laughs> uh, Jacksonville's 30th on Regression. the year. Regression. I know. <laughs> it's a 52-point over-under, and uh, Cousins has been a top-five quarterback two weeks in a row, guys. I don't know if you realize that. A top-five so uh, he's also been a QB1 for three straight weeks. I'm going to go with Kirk here. And I'm throwing a confidence play for Miles Sanders against the Green Bay Packers. He needs it because uh, I don't have it. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like Andy is the one who has pushed me to, uh, to put this out there into Everything the Everything Mike says, I say the opposite. Ready, go. Yes. Uh, the, the matchup against Green Bay, it is juicy. Green Bay has given up top 10 production to the running back position in every game but three this year that is a matchup you want to exploit before the seattle meltdown in front of everybody miles was averaging 20 opportunities a game and that's including the game where he got hurt so I, i'm i'm back in with miles sanders he may not be uh you, you may you can adjust and say he's not elite uh through the rest of the season because of the offense but i still think that he's a very strong play all right jason at, at running back i'm going with chris carson Man, did he look good this last week. He caught the ball well. He ran yeah. fast. He, he 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 ran so well and looked so good and was very well rested after the game because he only had 34% of the snaps and eight carries. So they were – I mean, the, this was that Seattle implosion game you were talking about um, where the Philadelphia offense just fell apart. And, I, you know, they were able to say, okay, let's, let's really, you know, not rely on Chris Carson for this game. Uh, by the way, he finishes the running back 18 – Last week on those limited touches, I expect the touches to go up. Philly was a good run, D. Uh, you know, they're they're a negative opponent, minus 2.2 fantasy points over opponent's expectation. New The New York Giants, they're the opposite. They're plus one, two. So I think with a full workload, a good matchup, uh, Chris Carson is going to be – he's going to be a league winner, I, I think. Heading into the fantasy playoffs uh, the next could be. month, I think Chris Carson's going to dominate. All right, my opportunity knocks. I'm going to go with David Montgomery against Detroit this week. Lions are the worst against the running back position over the last five weeks and also the entire year as well. Uh, so I just want you to understand they've been bad consistently. They even made Duke Johnson look good, and you know that the passing game, Montgomery's involved. Five-plus targets each and every week. He's coming off his best game of the year. He's been an RB2 or better in five of six games. David Montgomery against Detroit, start of the week. Sometimes those stats aren't fair because, you know, it's it's just who they played and, and what running backs they had to face. But taking that out of the equation, they are still the dead last by a wide margin. They they <laughs> they, they, they stink at, at stopping running backs. You know what what's interesting, too, is Daryl Bevel's talking about pace this week with the mm -hmm. Detroit offense. So there could be more opportunities, just total snaps in this game, because uh, pace doesn't mean success. It does mean that you might get off the field even quicker. So we'll see what happens. It means my opportunity. Yeah, is it does. What exactly what it means? All right, I said it before, but my wide receiver starter this week is Corey Davis taking on the Cleveland Browns. Before uh, before Weathergate started taking place uh, a, a couple weeks ago, Cleveland was the second best matchup for fantasy wide receivers, and then they hit all the the three straight games of really bad weather where people just couldn't score uh, on the offensive side of the football. And we get back to regular weather. What happens? Oh, uh, rookie Colin Johnson, when in his first substantial game action of his career, drops four for 96 and a touchdown with Mike Glennon as the quarterback. And if you look at Corey Davis, man, he has been consistent. He's only the wide receiver 34 on the year, but he has only finished outside of a, a, the top 36 two times this season, and wow. that includes three games inside the top 24. Like Corey Davis has been very, very steady. Is this as close as we're getting to this year's Devontae Parker? Is it Corey Davis? Sure, uh, I, I get that. He's I know not, Parker yeah. set the world on fire, but Davis has really surprised people. It's it's the... the well, because he was left for dead. That's what it is. It's, it's not that he's as good as Parker was last year, but it was the, we assume this guy is no good. He's, he'll never be okay, left for dead. And then, and then it's like, oh no, he's, 
he's a good wide receiver. Um, and I, I like the call, Mike. I, I mean, I talked about it early. This is the game I want pieces in. And so my start of the week is Jarvis Landry on the other side of the ball. Everything yeah. you were talking about with I the weather. I considered him. With the weather games, three horrific weather games in a row, four of the last five. And, and I was – when Odell Beckham went down, I, I was really thinking Jarvis was going to be something special. We, we haven't had the opportunity to see it. And again, last week – Good weather, and all of a sudden you had 11 targets, the clear leader, eight for 143 and a touchdown. He looked uh, good. I, I like – yeah, and that's the other thing is I, I had been worried about the ribs. He'd been playing with some broken ribs. He he looked good. So if he's healthy and he's the number one target and the highest over-under of the week against a, a plus matchup against Tennessee, I, I think Jarvis Landry is going to have a second big week in a row. All right, I'm going to take a, a, a little bit more of a chance here at my wide receiver start of the week, but I'm going to go with Mike Williams against the New England Patriots. All right. Uh, New England has been giving up some bigger performances to wide receivers lately. Look, I'm going to do my cooking by the book. This worked with Brandon Cooks a couple weeks ago. Will Fuller was, uh, you know, the number one in this matchup and the number two, which is Mike Williams compared to Keenan Allen. Got it done. Uh, I'm going to go with Mike Williams here. Uh, I think he has the opportunity to score in this game. And when he scores, he's a top 15 player. So, there, you know, Justin Herbert, I do believe that you see a bounce back performance from him. They can move the football down the field. And uh, so I'm going to go Mike Williams. And my tight end grasping at straws start of the week oh. is Noah Fant versus Kansas City. <laughs> wait, Jason, what is please, that face? Oh, that's a please. Be good. I All right, wait, here's, here's my explanation for it. Over the last month, Kansas City has uh, given up the third most points to the tight end position, average giving up the third most points. And to be fair to those numbers, that was Darren Waller. That was Rob Gronkowski. But I believe that uh, Noah Fant could finally make a return to the top 10 this week because of this. Noah Fant saw seven targets against Kansas City earlier when they played. And that was also the game that we saw uh, Albert. Oh, Albert uh, Aguain Bunam. Did I say that? Aguain Bunam? Aguain Bunam? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a tough one. And uh, in that game... You know, Albert had seven for 60 in that game as well. So uh, the targets, like Drew Locke knows where he has to go against Kansas City. So I think Noah Fant could come through with a top 10 performance. I like it. At uh, tight end, I'm I'm going with Robert Tunyon, who when I was looking at, at you know where to look, I was surprised. Robert Tunyon, Tunyon is the tight end four mm -hmm. on the season. And you might say, well, yeah, that was because he had that monstrous 30-point week back in week four. But even over the last five weeks, long removed from that, he's the tight end four. He's involved, and it's hard to have more touchdown upside than being passed to by Aaron Rodgers right now. So uh, I think when you're in that landscape, you gotta you gotta kind of stay in the. You're not in the flames. You're just you know stand near the coals with Robert Tunyon. Yeah, I, I love him. <laughs> I love him for. <laughs> I, I I love that pick. I, I think he is somebody that you can kind of. You want some upside with your tight end, and he has it with Aaron yep. Rodgers. And then I'm going to go back to the well with Austin Hooper this week against Tennessee. It's this matchup that you guys have been talking about. Every, lots of starts of the week in this matchup. Please don't yeah. be a trap. Oh. <laughs> and uh, look, Tennessee, here's my argument. They've given up top six performances to opposing tight end three out of the last four weeks. And uh, he's going to need to score. But think of the, about the pass catching options that Baker has right now. It's Jarvis Landry. It's and Austin it's Austin Hooper. Hooper. So, yep. oh, what about think, Hodge? Yeah, what about him, Mike? He's uh, a hot, what, there's hodgepodge. a hodgepodge. There's a hodgepodge of wide receiver. Hig is hodgepodge. Hey, Options all over the place. So, I will go with Austin Hooper again in the very fun to predict tight end landscape. One more very important segment. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Without my advice, Mr. T would say, I pity the fool. So this week and, and last week, you want the Falcons' Young Way Coup. Now that is art. <sighs> yeah. Spectacular. Thank you. Uh... We want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the show. Debo Samuel signed jersey $67.36 yesterday. Hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions, your favorite fantasy players. Great gifts for the family. We have seen countless videos of people 
giving their father, their mother, uh, the jersey that they did not expect, an autographed jersey, and they're great prices. So use the code BALLERS over at pristineauction.com. Get a $10 credit, and that'll do it for today's show. We'll be back tomorrow with the second half of the Fantasy Forecast, the rest of the matchups. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be a great time, honestly. The Inching best time. towards 1,000 shows. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.